boy, you know you're nervous when you can't even open your lipstick. I was sitting down, I was like, oh, I can't open this thing. <laughs> Good night. I know you know my name is Wendy. Um, I'm a radical feminist. And we heard a little bit in the morning session what a feminist is. Is any woman here, do, do you consider yourself a feminist? Raise your hands. Yeah. I don't see every woman raise her hands. <laughs> um, what does feminism mean, actually? Feminism is this crazy idea that women are humans, deserving of equal opportunity and full human rights. That's what it is. So why do a lot of women fail or hesitate to identify with this um, label? It makes me think of a quote by Andrea Dworkin, a radical feminist and author. She said, a lot of women, I think, resist feminism because it is an agony to be fully conscious of the brutal misogyny that permeates our culture, society, and all personal relationships. That's what feminism does to you. I'll give you an example. Have you ever held a belief as a child? It was not correct, necessarily. And when you grew up, you learned the truth. You felt a little bit taken back. I'll give you a real life example. When I was small, my mother used to love to fry plantain, banana. And um, as she would stand by the stove frying a plantain, I would come up to her and I'd ask her for a piece of raw plantain to eat. She'd tell me, OK, I'll only give you one piece, because it's really not good to eat raw. So, you know, okay, I grew up thinking that raw plantain is, you know, like cookie, cookie batter, cookie dough. You shouldn't eat too much of it. You'll get sick. So then, when I became an adult, I asked my mother one day, hey, Ma, hmm, is it true that raw plantain is bad for you? She started one hysterical laughter. She was like, nah, you're crazy. I just told you that because if not, you would eat all of the plantain before I could fry it. <laughs> and when she told me that, I was like, what? A little piece inside of me kind of broke. You mean you lied to me? <laughs> Needless to say, it's much raw plantain as I want now. <laughs> but that's what feminism does to us. It, it makes us aware of situations that before we did not consider as overt. I myself always considered myself a feminist from even a young age. Even though I didn't adopt that terminology until I was in my 20s, I always believed that women were equal. I was, I was raised in a very strict gendered and religious household. And you know, I was taught from very early on that men occupy a certain role and women occupy a certain role. The man, you know, he's the head of the family, he makes all the ultimate decisions and He's, he's, you know, the authority. And by the same coin, um, I was raised to believe that women are the weaker sex. We have to submit to our husbands. They're the ones with the ultimate authority. And this always rubbed me the wrong way. I could never figure out why. It might sound crazy. To me, it sounds crazy now that I could never figure out why. But it put women in a subhuman class, men, women. Naturally, it rubbed me the wrong way. And so from a very young age, my life consisted of trying to disprove this myth that women are the weaker sex, and that women aren't as capable. And that's what feminism does. Feminism pushes back against sexism, trying to dispel these myths. But what is sexism? Sexism is, is discrimination based on your sex. Um, in 2014, so like a year ago, I posted some article on Facebook about sexism. And a male friend of mine commented on the post, he, an educated man, and he's like, no, sexism doesn't even exist anymore. We're in 2014. You're being emotional. You're being crazy. And he went on and on and on. And, be, and before I could even say anything, he proved my whole point. It does still exist. 
He was busy gaslighting me in his comments, telling me that I was being dramatic, I was being emotional. Gaslighting is when what happens, it usually happens to women when we're busy arguing a point and they tell you, no, you're being emotional. That's what gaslighting is. Yeah, I see a lot of me. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> People seem to think that because we've gained certain rights as women, the right to vote, to own property, to open a bank account without the permission of a man, that we have a sliver of maternity leave now, somehow that we're emancipated. But that's not the truth. We as women, and as girls, we deserve to live free from the socialization that we experience as girls. And when I speak of socialization, I mean as girls, and you know this, we are taught to be more polite, be more feminine, more nurturing, subdue your voice a little bit, don't speak up too much, you sound abrasive, don't give too many commands, you're bossy. This is all the socialization that we go through. And we deserve to live free from that. We also deserve to live free from male violence, of which women are the largest recipients thereof. Domestic violence, rape, abuse of all sorts. We deserve to live free from these things. In a world that is built around our biology as women as well. Another aspect that feminism has taught me is self-love. I learned a great deal about self-love, how to find what my strengths are, and basically be myself unapologetically. Stop apologizing. That's also something that women tend to say a lot. Uh, sorry, I think, maybe, be firm in your convictions. And I've, I've I'm fortunate that I've learned this at a relatively young age, that I can be myself unapologetically, and you can too. I've also learned at the same time to love other women, to see other women as my sisters. In a world that is filled with the hatred of women, making us feel and seem like commodities to be used and exploited and sold and bought. Feminism anchored me and taught me that I am not broken and that women are not broken. Sorry, I'm a little bit shaky still. <laughs> we need to learn that having affection for other women in all senses is important to our class. So affection for other women. In preparation for this talk, I asked on my Facebook, because I tend to do that a lot, I crowdsourced information and I asked, what is your opinion on friendship between two women? Well, <laughs> there were a lot of comments on that post. <laughs> the women were going on and on and on and on and on on the post and I was reading a lot of things about backstabbing and betrayal and dramatic and catty. And at a certain point in time, I didn't know if I was reading about female friendship or the Loch Ness Monster. You know that mythical creature that only a few people claim to have seen, but it doesn't exist? So the women brought forward in the post a lot of the obstacles that we encounter as women. Now, I cannot tell you that because I'm a feminist, I don't have any problems with women. I've never had problems with women. That's not reality. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that either. But we're going to go forward. What are the obstacles to female friendship? I break them down into three R's. Resentment, rivalry, and romantic relationships. Resentment is something we tend to feel and project onto other women. If we feel that we are not as strong in a certain area of our life, and we see another woman asserting that strength, we tend to project our shortcomings onto her, and we feel resentment toward her. We don't even know her. For example, if we've been taught to subdue our opinions and be a little bit more soft-spoken, and we see a woman standing in front of us vociferating her opinions, we might feel a little bit resentful toward her. Why is she being so loud? But she's not, she's not being rude or disrespectful. 
rivalry. That is something I don't think not a single woman here can tell me she hasn't felt towards another woman or had another woman feel towards her. Competition. I am here to tell you tonight that we are not in a competition with each other. <laughs> so bad days, <laughs> just in case you needed to know. The problem is, is we tend to compare too much. We're always comparing ourselves. We're always measuring ourselves against another woman. When in reality, we cannot do that, and we should not do that. We talk about other women, oh, I wish I had that dress she got, or she doesn't have as many degrees as I have, or I wish I looked that good, I wish I had those legs. We have to stop this. We have to stop doing this to ourselves. Either we are belittling ourselves, or we're belittling other women. It really needs to stop if we're to go forward. Romantic relationships. Now you see, I'm a millennial. I'm a millennial female. That is the generation after Generation X. So it's anyone born after 1980. I was born in 88. And um, I grew up on princesses, you know, Little Mermaid, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White. I was raised that your goal in life is to find a good man, <laughs> settle down, have a family, and you know, if you want, get an education, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> so, and that's a message a lot of women get, that we have to go find our other half. We have to go find our better half. I am not a half of a person. I am a whole person standing here before you. And every woman here is too, men too, for the men that are here. We are whole, complete people. I love you, Angela, okay? Don't say <laughs> things the wrong way. <laughs> but we are whole people here. And we don't need a romantic relationship to complete us. It can complement us. But we're not voids. We're not holes needing filling. And the problem is, is that when we find a romantic relationship, we think we tend, we, we got to grab onto it, and we throw everything to the side. Even if we've had friendships, from before the relationship, a lot of times we throw them to the wayside in favor of our romantic relationship at the moment. But we as women here, we need friends. Friends are like plants. They die if you don't water them. And so having a romantic relationship is fine, but you need to maintain your friendships. I hear women say, oh, he's my soulmate, he's everything to me, he's my best friend, he's my only friend. I'm like, why is he your only friend? <laughs> <laughs> a relationship is not your ultimate goal. There are other things in life also to aspire to. But what is the case for female bonding? Friendship between women can lower your stress level. With the right women, okay? Friendship with the right women can lower your stress level. <laughs> also, being friends with women provides a common world between us. Because what I go through as a woman, you can understand as a woman as well. It is something that men cannot grasp. There's nothing wrong with that either. So, friendship between women provides a point of crystallization for us a common world that we can draw on our experiences. Remember, we are wi women living in a man's world. And we need each other for, as reference points. And let us not forget that feminism depends on our continued interactions with other women. But how do we mend it? How, how do we actually make friends? First of all, and I know this sounds cliche, but you need to love yourself, okay? You, need, you cannot love anybody else if you cannot love yourself. And you are a woman, and how do you expect to love other women if you don't even love the woman who you see in the mirror? So you need to start accepting what you are in the present state, not 10 pounds lighter <laughs> or whatever. You need to accept yourself in the present state, inside and out. We need to have empathy and kindness towards other women. This is very, very important. Remember, we're all in this, and we're just trying to deal with our circumstances and our situations. Some of us here and outside, we deal with years of abuse and trauma, <coughs> poverty, racism, 
These are all the things we go through as women. And we need to remember and show kindness towards other women because we're just trying to survive. We're all acting and reacting to our environment. So lower those expectations a little bit. I'm not staying down to the floor, but be kind towards others and have empathy. And when you find some friends or a friend that you click with, stick to them. Nurture those friendships. Don't let them fall by the wayside because of work, because of family, because of a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or anything like that. And remember, you can disagree, but you have to maintain respect. That is the core of female friendships. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I've never been hurt by a woman or that I've never hurt a woman or anything like that. We all have, and we've hurt other women too. But we need to not somehow become disillusioned with this. We seem to feel like when men hurt us, okay, yeah, he's a man, and when women hurt us, it's like, oh, she's a woman. We tend to feel more hurt when we are hurt by women. But we need to hold on to the focal point and not be disillusioned and continue to strive towards friendship. Lastly, this is a call to action. I call it the three E's of female friendship. Eliminate, express, and educate. Eliminate all misogynistic speech. Misogyny is the hatred of women. It's just a fancy word. Eliminate all misogynistic speech out of our vocabulary, such as whore, slut, and bitch. I know we like to use that word, but we need to stop. Express our support for other women. Tell other, your friends that you're there for them. If you express admiration towards other women, it will not decrease your value. It won't. Tell them you're there for them. And educate. Educate girls and young and also older women about the benefits of female friendship. Take some of the information that you got here tonight. Maybe it's new. Maybe, maybe something picked your interest. Carry it forward. Let us set the wheels in motion. Remember that when women come together, like we're coming together tonight, powerful things can happen. What we have is each other. And really, that's more than enough. <laughs>